What is up, party people? This is Marshall Lee of DonkeyJawProjects.com. You know the drill. Um, you know, Twitter, Marsh Comics, that's where you can find me. And uh, there's something really cool going on that needs a little bit of attention. And that is, um, well, first of all, I just wanted to let you know what we're talking about today. It's going to be talking about experimenting with style, talking about influences, all kinds of cool stuff, animation, all kinds of stuff. We're going to get into it. Um, but first, I just wanted to give a little shout out um, to something cool. And let me, why am I not set up? Now I have to like switch things around a little bit because I, I changed my mind here uh, on what I was going to do right away. So there's this little thing called only death can save us <laughs> and it is russell leach uh you know him if you've watched the show you've you've seen him you know who he is and uh you know we got some some cool stuff here so it's uh it's it's a little look into a new version of the bronze age uh type of comic and um you know it's a really cool story you guys got to check this out um it's only got eight days left, and it's a little over halfway through the goal, so we need to get to that. Um, so if if you could uh, share share this link around, there's a link in the description, um, and please support because you know this is something that I think is a really cool project, something I think a lot of us comic uh, creators and uh, readers would really like to check out. Um, and once again, it's a Bronze Age uh, inspired cosmic fantasy romp bringing together action and pathos as the ancient elemental known as Death leaps from his ethereal retirement to help a young soul protect her loved ones, her world, and even existence itself. <laughs> so um, just lots of cool stuff. Russ Leach is an amazing creator. Um, and he's done some things with uh, Doctor Who. He's done some work for Ben 10, for Marvel Comics, How to Draw the Comics the Marvel Way UK edition. And, um, you know, you're getting a professional when you're getting this stuff. And it's really amazing stuff. So please hit that little back button, that back it button. And uh, also, if you can't back it, please share it um, on your Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, wherever, because uh, we need to make this thing happen. We only got eight days left. Um, so check that out. And um, other than that, let's see. I'm going to remove that. And ta-da! <laughs> I have a friend here. Um, a a f uh, a um, fellow triple a member triple uh, a creators community on discord, which I think there's a link in the description. I forgot to check, but if not, some of my other videos have it. Um, but we have today here, Mr. Epithet soup. What's up, dude. I am doing pretty good. How are you and everyone on the stream doing? <laughs> doing great um we got some comments let's see how everybody in the stream is doing that's a good question we got uh van illustration also known as clay how you doing sir we got dale here in the house animation yeah we're going to talk a little bit yep. about um animation influences uh and let's see um who else is here acid lace is here thank you for coming and hanging out and we have Jimith Jameth. That's a cool name. Hey, folks. Yeah, that comic looks fantastic, doesn't it? I think it does. I can't wait for it. And then we got Johan here. What's up, Johan? What is up, everybody? Another person that uh, we've come to hang out with. And um, so... Yeah, um, lots of cool stuff going on here, but today we wanted to talk about art style, like I said, um, and uh, kind of experimenting with it, with how to like kind of find our art style, things like that. Um, and, you know, I guess, uh, I, first of all, I want to say that Epithet Soup has some pretty cool um, links in the description, so definitely check those out. We're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, a little bit later. Oh. Lame Vision official popped in. What's up? You know, I forgot to spread the links. So I'm going to do that as you talk about some stuff. What I wanted to ask um, Epithet is 
what uh do you feel like you kind of have landed on your style and um what kind of things influence your style or would you like to influence your style oh, okay you're starting out with the big guns i see um <laughs> all right so what influences my style as well as what currently uh what i want in the future to influence my style uh, i'd say anything personally anything that's entertaining in media whether it be comics uh, animation and basically just anything that entertains me personally like my main style focuses at the, as of now if i had to say focuses more on a cartoony aspect and you can definitely tell it's very cartoony and i'd say i'd say it's a mixture of uh flasher uh jack ham if you know who that is because he i've read a lot of his books they're really good um i would also have to say a bit of anime and manga but typically the classic anime and manga if i had to be very honest yeah. as well as classic uh, like classic comics too so anything from like old marvel i i like that stuff personally that art looks intriguing especially with the inking style yeah um so is that um i mean because i've seen that you uh kind of maybe haven't even landed on necessarily comics as your definite thing i think you've played around with comics you've played around with other kinds of art what, what uh um what kind of like influences with comics has there been and and I, I guess tell us a little bit about like what you do what you want to do all right well uh I'm Epithet Soup. I am 23. I'm in college right now. Um, I'm trying to be more of a cartoonist, whether it be I'm trying to do get into cartooning, really. I but I, if I had to pick which side I would want to be, I would be in the comic side of things rather than animation. And we'll get to that part soon with animation, as well as um as well as uh, what, what else did you want to know? Um, just like what some of your um, comic influences, you mentioned Marvel, um, old Marvel oh. stuff, but you, you also mentioned things like anime and manga, manga and stuff. And so, yeah. We'll oh, okay. Of... Now my influences would have to be something of the lines of for Marvel. I mean, I'll just go in order. First I said, uh, I'll just start with Marvel, but for classic Marvel, I would have to say, uh captain america spider-man and this one's a little underrated but howard the duck mm. yeah, yeah well I, there's a lot of fans of that too so <laughs> oh, okay don't worry i'm not worried as for the anime and manga aspect oh where do i begin uh anything by asama tezuka i, I like his style personally because um his style knows how to be very simple but very complex to look at where you can see you know what he's trying to do especially with the posing but mm -hmm. it's on a simple yet not so much detailed image you know mm. as for uh, another uh, specifically a, a specific example would have to be astro boy personally because in that one that takes place in a machine-like setting where robots are basically a part of society essentially and if you pay attention to the people and the backgrounds you can uh basically differentiate which is a background and which is a person and what's organic and what's unorganic in a sense where yeah you can tell them apart where people could do that by accident with like characters or even backgrounds if not careful and tezuka definitely took his time when it came to designing hmm well, yeah, uh, that that's interesting. There's there's so many takeaways you can get from different um, creators and things. Um, right. When it comes to style, uh, you know, I I I actually am, have been thinking about this a lot myself, um, and even playing around with it, like experimenting with style, um, trying different other other artists' styles, kind of and mishing and mishmashing them. Uh, to a degree, do you find yourself kind of doing that intentionally or do you just kind of draw and what, what comes is, is what your style is? 
I would have to say a mix of both to some degree. Like, accidentally speaking, when I doodle, I just simply try to think back to the rules. Well, not rules, but fundamentals of b- books that I've taught me and like how to do stuff. And I do a little twist on them. Like, sometimes I'll draw anatomy of a comic book character of some kind, or maybe I'll draw a noodle arm, like a rubber hose or something. Mm-hmm. As for the intentional, now that all depends on art books that I've received or received or collected. So for example, I have a Sean Dickinson, like a mm-hmm. Sean Dickinson, yeah, Sean Dickinson comic, not comic, but like um, a, a whole art book that talks about, oh, how he draws and what style he draws in. And it's like an interesting mix of both animation and comics turned into one. And that's kind of what I want to implement in my style as well, where it shows, oh, it's very animated, even though it's a static page. So that's pretty cool, in my honest opinion. Hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's interesting um, how how style can affect things. Um, I think a lot of people uh, also get hung up on um, style sometimes, but I, I wanted to um, just say uh we got nefarious in here a friend oh, of yeah. uh, another another triple a hey, uh, nefarious Discord friend um we got fitz factor yo what's up and um jimeth says yeah styles can sometimes put fresh energy into an older character like mobius's style for example um and yeah i, th- I feel like uh it's always interesting when somebody has a very defined kind of style uh, that's, that's almost, that's kind of obvious and, and something you really like um, it's interesting to see their take on, on a popular character or a classic character or something like that. Um, so sometimes that aspect was what drives me to almost want, you know, a very definitive style, even though, you know, that's not necessarily the only way to go, you know, that is true. And actually, I used to think that too, because, um, see, initially, I wanted to have a comic style that was reminiscent of comic strips. So like anything reminiscent of uh, Peanuts, uh, Garfield, anything like that, in particular, it would be it would make you think of those things. But over time, and this is based on experience alone, because uh, I used to do I used to have a Webtoon account. Uh, or yeah, I used to post it on Webtoon before I deleted it. And what happened was it just became very numbing, I guess. Like it wasn't that fun for me as I did it. And I think the reason why is because I knew how to draw the characters, which was fine. And the style, again, it makes you think of something like a comic strip, but it didn't feel exciting. It's kind of like um, it, it, it didn't, because I wasn't trying to draw differently, or because I was stuck in a ruled kind of ruled way of drawing a comic, I was stuck like that. Like, I mean, name a comic, like name someone who has the style of a comic strip, like say, say uh, you've, you, you've talked about Von Bodie before, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like his is very expressive and it shows not just characters. It also shows beautiful scenery, very, very uniquely drawn in this painting kind of style and it that's something i wanted to do the problem was my drawing skills were very limited and i didn't technically learn the fundamentals when i did the comic yeah and i thought to myself i could do better and i found out the only way to do that was pick up a book and start reading like you always do yeah um yeah that's interesting um so let's see i had a question i got distracted by the chat for a second (laughs) um but uh um it's interesting that you pick up certain things from certain people um and and like it's almost like you can kind of combine like oh well I, i like the way this guy draws hands and i like the way this guy you know does gesture um you know i like how how this person um you know their backgrounds or or the way they draw crowds or you know whatever like uh faces you know there's all these different 
you know, things um, that you can kind of take. And, and even I think Jack Kirby, somebody t- said this, I forget who's the last place I heard this from, but uh, you know, even I think Jack Kirby was like, you know, if you like how a guy, how a certain person draws hands, steal it, like use that. <laughs> and there, there's something to that. But you, of course, if you're stealing somebody's kind of style, you have to make it your own. And I almost think that's inevitable anyways. Um, but you know, you can't just copy someone's style wholesale. Um, yeah. And I actually can agree with that 100% because I actually was kind of like that when I was beginning as a cartoonist or when I was trying to do my own stuff and I liked the way they were drawn and I even tried mimicking them in my own way. But then I thought, how is this drawn? How am I supposed to do this? Why is it so hard for me? Because they had a system in which case it worked. And while I was mimicking how they did it, it didn't always look right or they were just sloppily, sloppily made occasionally. Hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, we got Michael Hang Art here just stopping in to say, hey, thanks for popping in. Um, you said you're going to check it out on the replay. Um, lots oh, okay. of our Lots of our friends from the Discord are here. Um, oh, okay. Let's see. Lame Vision official says, "I think the way different. Oh, I think way different of how people find their styles will also differ from person to person." Yeah, absolutely. This is true because, I mean, for starters, like when I first started doing the whole cartooning aspect, I wanted to do cartooning, which is something that I stopped doing because I didn't. Again, I didn't understand the fundamentals. And then when I started reading the fundamentals, the fundamentals interested me. And in my mind, I was thought, I thought, hmm, maybe I should try comic books. And I tried reading comic books that clearly have what I like, and I read them. So Jack Kirby, uh, oh, Rob Liefeld, I definitely love his stuff. His stuff is very expressive, even though, um, even though like they're like super muscular at times. So that'll happen. But at the same time. Yeah, I started looking at it and I thought maybe that's what I want to do. And it's a mix of, it's kind of a mix of those things because earlier this week, I want to say maybe last week, somewhere around that, I tried leaning back towards uh, Jack Ham, like doing like how he draws cartoons and stuff, how in his cartooning book. Yeah. And now because of that, see, I have this interesting method of learning how to draw. And one of the interesting methods is, if I read on how to do something once, I'll understand a bit of it. But if I reread something, and this is probably not just for me, it's probably for everybody personally. Like if you hear your favorite song multiple times, you'll know the lyrics by heart. So I kind of want to do it like that. Like I want to know, and recently I've been re- reading, uh, I I recently reread the um, scenery, scenery, and I've been posting some on Instagram. I haven't really made any digital pieces of them yet. I might. And right now I'm reading, rereading animals on how to draw them. And because again, like with Tezuka, he had a unique way of drawing like people and animals, yet somehow he already knew the fundamentals, but he's bending it and manipulating it like rubber and, or clay even, and making them look really detailed, even though they're not real, obviously not realistic, but they're believable to be giraffes or horses or lions or anything really Mm -hmm. and yeah yeah Yeah. it's it's interesting i think um i think one thing that is interesting about that is i try to do that and and i think you know you you were talking about how you you were kind of um drawing before you realize stuff about the fundamentals and and i'm the same way like i kind of try to do that but at the same time i think the people who can do that the best are the people who actually take the time to uh really get a good grasp of the fundamentals a lot of times that's the case um but there are there are outliers um who maybe never quite get that but they find their way through to um a believable yet expressive style um and i also wanted to talk about the the fundamentals a little bit um you you said uh you kind of there was a time where you started to discover uh the fundamentals um and i'm curious um how how that 
how that experience was and how it is now like uh, um do you feel like you've practiced it enough do you feel like you need to really learn them better or or does it um almost mess up your style or or does it help your style you know well i mean there's a lot to answer there so yeah, essentially I I, when okay. when i first started reading them or being told read the fundamentals and as a kid, and I, I was maybe maybe 19, 20 when I started reading the fundamentals, and I was like, Ugh, I don't want to do this. I just want to do all that stuff. I wanted to do how I normally did it, but it wasn't satisfying. So I believe I just said, you know what? I'll do it. I'll do it and see what happens. If I don't like it, I don't like it. If I do, then I do. And as I read it, as I read it, I learned bit by bit. But as I learned bit by bit, I would progressively read more because it intrigued me. It intrigued me, like how things are made, and I was invested. So after I finished uh, Anatomy, for example, like now this is something that I probably wish – it's a little mix of advice as well as uh, for everyone, for anybody personally. But like what I did was I read uh, Human Anatomy first, and then I read Animal Anatomy. And let me tell you. You need to read animal anatomy first before you read humans or in any way personally or compare them because you will find out that the, how the animals work between humans, it will intrigue you a little bit, especially with the experimentation of how to draw them because this is something – like there's so many similarities between a human and an animal, like the noses, the eyes. There are definitely some similarities, but there are also some differences with hands. For example, did you know that um, with some animals – um, technically some of them are only using a single digit or finger to walk, such as horses and zebras, and that dogs don't technically walk on their palms. They walk on their fingers as well. Huh? No one would have known that. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, you, you, no one would have known that. And the only ones that are able to do that, or the only animals that can walk on their palms completely are like, uh, gorillas or, anything or any animal that has opposable hands essentially like humans so mm -hmm. rodents gorillas monkeys anything like those wow. and it's fun it's fun when you learn this and as so how you, does knowing that help you draw well many things because now i remember when i attempted to draw human anatomy just just, just um just attempting it and i messed up because the shoulder blades were on the sides instead of on the back and i thought like oh it looks pretty good i think it was it looks pretty amazing in my mind but what happened was is that i did it like an animal and i didn't understand the comment at first but then after i read the animal book i want to say maybe a year after finding this out i was like oh that's what happened hmm. that's why they said that in that fashion because they weren't being like insulting they were being literal and this helps this this avoids any bone construction mistakes personally especially when you learn how to do anatomy and of, of humans or, or of humans or animals without a doubt so do you feel like um just having the information helps um or do you feel like it has to be something that you repeatedly practice over and over and over once again i'd have to say a bit of both and absolutely i would have to say that because if you recognize yourself with how to draw something you will definitely get better with it over time because in my mind when i first read it when i first read the anatomy books and the scenery and stuff like that there was bits of information without practicing mind you bits of information that I remembered, but the ones that stood out to me that intrigued me the most, such as uh, for the scenery, I'll change the subject a little bit, but it's the scenery. It has the follow through method, which that intrigued me because do you want to know what else has a follow through method? Comics. Yeah. Hmm. That has a follow through method when it comes to scenery. Okay. Especially when you're reading panels as well as reading uh, word bubbles, it, it interested me and it felt like a technique that you could use. Can you explain the follow through method uh, as it as it pertains to um, uh, the the like the um, scenery? Of course. So with follow through, given I can't say it word for word from the book, but I'll say it as 
I explain it as much as I can, but the follow through is essentially where your eyes are paying attention to where it has this sort of comfortable feel, especially with the composition. So if you're drawing a composition of some kind, similar to how you draw a composition, a composition for a, a comic panel or for a splash page, you could do that too. Like maybe you want to create an eye movement, which follows a C curve. And so you want to do something similar to a C curve, like scenery, like perhaps maybe something's going on in the sky and then something in a little bit of the side, and then something is making you follow the ground. Or maybe you want to do an S curve where it's making you climb up a mountain and you see the jagged rocks making an S curve, making a nice follow through. Something like that, essentially. You have to make it... So, so the follow through method is essentially learning how to lead the, the viewer's eye through the illustration. Exactly. And again, comics do that too. If you look very carefully and when I compared them, even, even the cartoony kind still do, does that. So that, that says something. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Without a doubt. Um, I've never heard it called the follow through method or if I have, I've forgotten. Um, but well, I definitely have heard of the concept in different ways. Well, the thing is like, I see, I have not heard of that either. And but I, the reason why I knew about it is um because I read this book because Jack Ham is not really that known. I don't think he's like, imagine him being the Bern Hogarth of um instead of anatomy, but it's more he's the Bern Hogarth of scenery and animals and cartooning. All and right. uh, he has anatomy books, but his are a bit less informative, I guess. Like especially with being dynamic with the anatomy but it's still helpful I, I still i have all of them personally but i do know that there are some methods that could be used even in today so you um you read when you get a book about you know how to draw or anatomy or you know these kind of things is that how you typically um approach it you just kind of read it through and then go back and do exercises or Yes, exactly. Like I read it once and then I just read it once and, and um, I essentially go back when I feel like I understand it enough and make enough attempts. And then I just do that with the rest of the other stuff. Hmm. And I also try to keep a, I'm actually starting to keep a, uh, a method where even though I feel like I know how to do it, I also want to reread some chapters, like just to even throughout the day, personally, even maybe if I'm on, if I'm having breakfast, drinking my coffee, I'll drink, I'll read a little bit of that and, you know, try to remind myself once in a while. It doesn't hurt. No, I would say it definitely doesn't. Um, I think it's always good to revisit, especially the fundamentals. Um, there's, uh, you know, there, the, I think I remember Michael Jordan saying it or, or just, basketball in general and, and usually most sports and stuff they'll say you know you know yeah you might be interested in like you know dribbling the ball between your legs and like <laughs> you know doing fancy moves and dunking and all that kind of stuff but when it comes down to it you're only as good as is basically the amount of practicing of the fundamentals that you do um you yeah. have to always go back to it and no matter how good you are no matter how pro level you are you should always be revisiting the fundamentals as much as you can you know exactly and um to bring this back again like how i used to draw before another thing that someone actually told me is that i think the reason why i also didn't like it is because in my mind when i drew like that in the style of a comic strip and i feel like i did all right and i did pretty well in my mind i felt like i peaked you know, and I peaked, meaning like, oh, I don't need to do anymore. And I didn't like that. So I, and that's why when I practice the fundamentals, I like doing that. And it's more exciting when I draw now, especially, uh, especially when I'm drawing in any style I can think of. Hmm. Interesting. So how does that relate with, with style though? Like, um, like, are you, I don't know, like, do you, also practice style independent of thinking about fundamentals or i don't know i guess i guess for me that what i have learned from fun fundamentals um 
it does end up informing all of my drawing to a certain degree. Although one of the biggest fundamentals I've talked about it a million times on my shows is uh, just doing drawing in the right order, especially I always think of with figures, especially, but you know, drawing the gesture first, then building out the form and then the detail later. Um, I still forget to do that to this day, even though I, it, you know, <laughs> it's understandable, but like, I do do that. Like um, I do definitely practice form, especially when with the body, especially even if it's something like a simple cartooning type of thing, even if it's a simplistic looking body, um, I still try to practice outside of my style. Um, just recently, actually, I tried going for uh, going for a comic book style because recently I tried drawing the flaming carrot, like the old, like a uh, Bob, uh, Bob, uh, I forget his last name, Bob, uh, but he's the creator of the flaming carrot. And mm -hmm. I tried attempting to draw him and I did a decent job and it came out almost similar, but not exactly the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But, and it helped me learn about finding my own style. And uh, not, not so long after I drew, uh, are you aware of the, uh, the game among us by any chance? No. <laughs> oh, it's like this game where, uh, well, it's like this game that has a little simplistic art style, very similar to that of like, it's a game that you probably would, f would find pretty fun. It's, it's like a murder mystery kind of game. Cool. But with like a space sci-fi theme going along with it. But yeah, I tried drawing in that style to the best of my ability and adding a mix of my, what I know to it. And it helps personally. So how do you go about um, practicing a style? Do you literally just copy an image you see or um, do you try to apply aspects of that style to something you do or you like to draw? I would have to say I would have to be observing something to I would have to observe it first to get an idea of what I like about it, what I don't like about it, as well as even attempt to draw the character in that style to see what I can do and um, or, or what, how, how I would be able to draw it. And typically what I would do is attempt to draw it in that style and see if I gain anything out of it. And not too long ago, I actually, on my Instagram page, I attempted to draw in the style of Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball and all that. And I think I did a decent job trying to trying to draw in his style because I think I pulled off his, uh, his uh, style when it comes to that of character design as well as, as, well as um, posing. Interesting. And I also tried doing, I also tried mixing in my own style or try mixing stuff that, I, that comes to my mind. So like Anna Barbera, you, you know, you obviously know who that is, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like for Scooby-Doo, I, or I, I think of a, like something from Hanna Barbera, like Scooby-Doo, and I add that to my style and, you know, I, that's what comes to my mind. Essentially, it all depends on what comes up in my brain or what goes on in my day and what I see, what's on the internet or even just stuff that I actively look for. And I think, man, I want to draw bits and pieces of that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, do you think that you will ever come to a place where you land on a style that you, that pretty much you stick with, with for the most part, or do you feel like you're going to always be wanting to experiment with style and, maybe people will never be able to pinpoint what your style is because of it. Now let's see. Now I don't. Okay. Now the style that I'm trying to go for is something, something that's somewhat, um, it has the aspect of a cartoon, but at the same time, it'll have a sense of reality to it. And I don't just mean like a sense of reality writing wise. When you write something, I mean like when you draw it, it'll have a sense of, reality as well as a bit of cartoony like style to it but at the same time i can't say what style will permanently be my style because even with artists like a uh, uh, to bring back rob liefeld he used to draw very caricaturized poses of like humans like muscular men or very very slender people like women and stuff like that he used to draw them that way but if you look at his uh like his comics now like currently they look very on par with the uh, modern comics if i'd be very honest hmm. interesting and 
not to mention like if you actually i read this book personally like a, a couple books and i and i would recommend if you, and if you want to look at them up too that's up to you uh the books are cartooning philosophy and practice by ivan brunetti and another one is called uh the manga like manga in theory and practice by hirohiko araki and i read them both and what happened was i understood like methods of how they drew or where they come from when they draw essentially and where their style starts with and what they become now you don't now i remember in araki's book he stated that like don't take it to heart that's up to you if you want if like for anyone who wants to keep a style person style but personally this it went something the lines of as you evolve your art should evolve too hmm. so while i won't say my art would would be a specific style it would be something and just grow and grow and grow noticing bits and pieces of what it used to be still be intact like uh oh a, a perfect example gandy tartakovsky he used to draw very simplistically like with when he drew cartoons but then as years went by he drew samurai jack which had the cartoony style but it had bits and pieces of what like what was it, what he drew essentially and then look at today he draws primal which honestly i'm surprised that's not a comic book because that looks amazing without a doubt and i'm excited for season two with, without a doubt as well and yeah no like you can still see bits and pieces of what he had so i won't say that i'll have a permanent style that will stick with me forever but i will have a style that will be in my subconscious and then as my subconscious uh uh decides to mold it in a different way bits and pieces will stick in my art i will say that hmm interesting uh, um i think oh. of uh go ahead oh yeah i was also going to say that um in the brunetti and also in the brunetti book it talked about um that um it, like it gave you examples of exercises that you could do to draw in any way you want for style creation so like drawing a car or objects or of any kind of your choice really within five minutes but then change it to three minutes and then two minutes and see what you like the most and depending on your mood on what you like especially for your story that's what you should go with interesting yeah um i'm trying to look up an artist because i can't suddenly remember no problem for sure um his name but I, I know I used I, I thought I knew oh here it is okay Keith Giffen have, have you heard of Keith Giffen uh what has he made he has made a bunch of things um he's been around for a long time uh let's see I'm trying to think of what you might know um I know the first thing I kind of thought of um was trencher because it's just a very different style that he's done but he he's an artist who's worked in many different styles um and he actually can do a really good kirby <laughs> oh. um, and he also he to the point where he's done some some of kirby's old titles i know he's done like omac and some other stuff um and and he kind of imitated kirby style in his own kind of way there, there's kirby like uh things in in that particular comic um but then uh, he's also done this weird style that he did in trencher and in lobo um that was i don't know it's very contoury it's very abstract it's it's fun it's chunky it's it's interesting and it's kind of flat to a certain degree, but in a really fun, awesome way. Um, yeah, I can, uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, he's done a bunch of stuff. He's been around forever. Um, trying to think, let's see. I'll show the trencher stuff. Um, I got to share the, 
the thingy. But I also think of um, Eric Larson, who does Savage Dragon. He's played a lo- around with style a lot in his. Um, oh yeah, I could definitely his, see that in Savage Dragon. He's played he he's played around, but he I know what his style is because he's been he was kind of somewhat pretty consistent with his style for a long time, and then he started experimenting a little more in his comic. But still, he always goes back to that typical very much Kirby influenced, but just, I don't know, nineties superhero style. He tends to go back to that. Um, all right, let me share screen here once again. And, uh, let's see, where is it? Here we go. Uh, we'll do this. Bam. All right. So so this is, you know, Google. (laughs) Wow. That looks pretty very different. Um, it's it's kind of a sketchy, scratchy style. Um, it's interesting. Um, let's see. But then you you change, go over to his uh, OMAC. I'm pretty sure he's the one. Yeah, and and you got stuff like this where it looks like Kirby. Um, oh, yeah, stuff. he's spot on. You pretty know, spot on. It's pretty cool. It's it's yeah. different, but it's it's his own like kind of version of, of Kirby. Um and you, you know, know he kind of makes me think of like he's the um oh what's the word? Like he's uh it's like he's the Harvey Kurtzman of like action comics in a sense. Because hmm. Kurtzman did like a lot of cartoony had a lot of cartoony style so when it came to shape and when it came to um designing characters. And then you can see here, this is like earlier on in his career where it's it's just like it's a comic book style, typical comic book kind of style. Like, <laughs> um, right. you know, so he, he really has a big range um, of what he can do. So I don't know. It's interesting. But he, somehow he's been able to um, kind of play around with that and then... Um, still be i guess relevant have a career sometimes that's that's almost helpful um if you're a freelance illustrator oftentimes people will ask you to draw they want you to draw something in a certain style and it's like well why did you hire me you you see in my portfolio what my style is that's how i draw you know um so some some artists have a hard time with that. And some artists are really good at just being like, all right, yeah, I'll draw it in whatever style you want. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know? it kind of make ends meet. It makes sense. What's that? I yeah. Said, yeah. That is true. They have to make ends meet. Yeah. But, but you know, was- it's interesting though, because there, those two different uh, approaches, like there is that approach of, okay, I'll draw whatever style you want. Um, and then you kind of get lost in the process. You, you, you aren't really like you don't really get to make your mark on the things you make and therefore it's kind of it can it can be good because you can do anything but it can also be bad because um you're you're not like making your your brand is like lost you you don't really have a brand you're just an any any man you know um whereas some people who stick with their style and say well no i'm not gonna draw like that that's not how i draw this is how i draw people will start to come to them specifically for their style and they might be happier doing the work they're doing and they might actually be able to make more money because their style is interesting and people want them for their style and they actually pay more sometimes for that this so it's is true because really I, interesting how to do that you know <laughs> this is true because um yeah no because like i remember at one point i did like a commission like a commission for someone and what they wanted was completely different from how i draw like now, I did it and I was willing to do it because, you know, I didn't want to feel like I wasted his time and stuff. I didn't want to, you know, do all mm-hmm. that. And, you know, I did it. I just had fun and did did it. And yeah, either way something. you approach it, there's no judgment. I'm not trying to say one way is better than the other, just just to clarify. <laughs> yeah, I, I I understand. Because, um, yeah, I know that happens sometimes because, like, um, yeah, I know that that'll happen sometimes, especially when you're trying to do, like, artwork and stuff. For sure. 
Like, um, what's that? But yeah, I do agree. Like sometimes they'll look for you if you're like if you draw in the specific specific style, but then oh, that's not what they wanted them for. It can kind of be not not stressful. I want to say it can be kind of underwhelming in a sense. If that makes any sense? Yeah, it's not, a, it's not a bad thing, but at the same time, it's also not a not a um. It's not a bad thing, but it's like it can be kind of discouraging if you think about it, if, especially if it's a style that they don't want to draw in. Hmm. But yeah. but to each their own, honestly. I mean, personally, I'll draw anything. I I just like drawing as a whole, personally. Yeah, I mean, there's something to be said for that too. You know, you might that might be what makes what gives you joy. You might actually enjoy playing in different. Uh, you know, playing in, di- in different sandboxes, you know, and, and like you said, that just almost the act of drawing sometimes. And, and it, you know, I, I kind of don't know where I land with that either. Cause I do play around with different styles and, you know, I mean, you can even see, I made two um, only death can save us uh, fan art things. And both are two radically different style. One's more like that kind of, you know, McFarlane 90s, you know, kind of just a uh, comic book superhero type style, the best that I can do, I guess. And then the other one is like this Fleischer animation or Fleischer studio slash, you know, Bruce Tim cartoony thing. And both were fun in their own ways um to do so you know I, I like to play around with that stuff as well and speaking about only death can save us uh sideburn says i just backed only death can save us all the best russ yes that's hey, awesome russ. <laughs> so so we got <laughs> we got a uh a some support so thank you so much sideburns i'm sure russ is going to be super excited that um that he got another backer and and um you know hopefully everybody else goes out there again the link is in the description um and let's see we also have um lame vision says hey epithet soup glad to see another new ground user followed you oh thank um, you that you know speaking that's actually a good segue because that's what i wanted to talk about next um you know there's a lot of social media out there and um you know, there's, there's the typical ones, the Instagram, Twitter, you know, Facebook, all that fun stuff. But uh, you've been talking about this, this other site that not everybody knows. I think it's, uh, I think it's maybe a little more focused on um, gaming, but there's also artists from, from what I gather. Um, And, and it's also not an app, which is, you know, probably what part of why people haven't quite, I don't know, maybe why I haven't heard of it, at least, um, until you mentioned it. But tell us a little bit about um, Newgrounds and and what you kind of do there. Okay, well, where do I begin? Uh, Newgrounds (laughs) is essentially, okay, it was created around 1995, so a few years before YouTube. And essentially, it started Hmm. off as a fanzine for the Neo Neo Geo, so like the system, Hmm. game system. Hence the term Neo Geo, New Grounds. It's basically two words synonymous with it. And what I typically do on it is simply draw art and stuff. So like I draw I draw occasionally like cartoon art, essentially. I wanted to draw animation, but I don't know enough about it to say I'm good at it. Or rather, I want to learn more about it before I attempt it. Like, I do want to attempt it, most likely, but at the moment, I'm too occupied with what I have, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, what you do typically there is essentially uh, you just create games, you play games, you essentially create art. You can create as as, as much as you want for the most part. So, like, if you wanted to say, um say you wanted to play a game of some kind you could just search and find that as well as uh when it comes to uh, when it comes to maybe like oh interacting interacting it's much more interesting when you interact with the users because um there's it has a special forum ground where you can basically ask for advice and people will be willing to talk to you it doesn't really it doesn't really uh 
seclude itself to being like exclusive to specifically uh, certain people. And that's about it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I like about it because in a sense, if I had to summarize Newgrounds in a few words, it's kind of like if underground comics, if underground comics in a way involved gaming and pretty much every form of the media, that's why, because you mentioned why there wasn't an app for this, because Newgrounds is more of an underground place in a sense. Yeah. It feels more under, I mean, it feels more underground and it's in a way better, but at the same time, less overwhelming if I had to be very honest with you, because with other stuff you have today with apps like um, YouTube, Instagram, all that, and, and, um, it's more competitive in a sense where it's like you feel like you're not getting that far, but on this site, it's it feels like people are going to see your stuff without a doubt because with uh, because I know it's hard to see unless you do like certain hashtags, you're not going to get noticed. I do know, yeah. Right. And um, what else? What else? And everyone's going to see your art, and um, it's kind of like a game in a sense. In fact, Newgrounds feels like it's a game in a sense as like, um, cause, uh, as you, as you start off, you just, you know, become a beginner, but then as you get better, you level up in a sense. In fact, it even has, a, it even has a level system, almost like a video game. Yeah. I see. There's like a score here, um, on your thing. Yep. And, right. um, yeah, they don't have, they don't really have, um, up 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 votes or down votes but yeah like i prefer that i prefer the star system in all honesty oh there's it says there is votes right oh uh, so there, people uh, comment and they vote uh yeah they comment vote and essentially they can do yeah you can comment and vote interesting yeah like um now typically you can and you can actually get work you can actually get work with the forms as well, depending on what you're trying to do. Like if you're as lame vision, cause I remember lame vision talking about, um, uh, talking about him being on new grounds. And I don't know. I don't know if, um, he has a commission sheet. I don't know if he does have a commission sheet. If he does let me know. But, um, if, because that's how most artists usually make it by doing commissions of some kind. So, They'll, they can you can send up a, set it set up some kind of commission sheet on the forums or on your profile page and you could tell people oh hey this is what I do I draw in this particular style and that's about it cool and you can also do requests for you can also interact and collaborate actually I think now's a good time to bring up the animation portion because the animation and the game portion are a lot more a lot more collaborative in a sense because Newgrounds also does this thing where they involve something known as um, if you know what um, jams are, do you know what a jam is? No. Well, I don't know. I get, I might <laughs> like well, you, I mean, you jams, work on a project with somebody. Is that basically what it is? <laughs> yeah. They do these like jams and the current jam right now is the among us jam. And now I didn't enter that. Cause again, I didn't know how to anim animate and I didn't know who to work with personally. And now if you do an animation project with someone, you know how on YouTube you'd have to like um, on YouTube, you have to put their name in the description you mm -hmm. don't really have to do that in this case, especially if you curl, if you collaborated with people, you could just put their, um, uh, like, you know how it's, it's showing your username on YouTube and stuff like that and says, subscribe to this person and stuff. Right. Right. The, I, another user would appear right next to it to show that they collaborated mm -hmm. and you have the option to follow them from there instead of going to the description. It's faster that way. Interesting. Cool. Um, it's more fun personally. So, so do you feel like um those that site and other kind of even Instagram and, and other social media um and, and community in general as well? Do you feel like that has any um effect on your style? I think new because the thing is, yeah, I think new grounds does have an effect on my style on the grounds that when um when I was a kid, I used to play games on there all the time. Not a kid, but like maybe you know, 13, high school, 14, yeah. around that age. 
I used to play that a lot and it was a fun place. Now I didn't have an account then, but I thought to myself, where, where, but I believe around 2018, I didn't know where to get my face out there in a sense or do stuff. And Instagram and Twitter were fine at first until like I wanted to find some place where in a way I had my own fan, like I had fans of my own. Mm-hmm. But like where it's easier, but at the same time, I still have to put in the effort. And then I remembered, oh hey, Newgrounds was a place, and then apparent and that they do art and stuff like that. Nice. Um, I think it's something interesting that I'd I'd like to maybe try posting some stuff there, see how that goes. It, the only thing is, I feel like maybe the community is, uh, you know, I don't know how I w- if I would fit in because I'm not such a gamer and I might not know about you know, the type of stuff that that community happens to be into, you know? I mean, they often do these like trends and stuff like that. As again, I've, as I mentioned, like when I asked you the question about among us, essentially, uh, of like, if you ever played it or heard of it at the very least, I've, I haven't played it. I've seen gameplay footage of it and I like it for the Mm -hmm. most part. And I remember actually my recent post on my art page actually got front paged because uh a lot of people liked it i don't know i mean i was shocked when i first saw that but yeah no like usually whatever they're talking about you have to check the art feed as well as the art feed of what's trending at the moment and simply Mm -hmm. try to work from there but don't just simply look at what's trending and then try to attempt it like all fake in a sense but do it in a way as if like you want to learn more about it and Mm -hmm. learn as much as you want about it and if it interests you enough, do it in your own style. Because I, before I even wanted to draw anything Among Us related or anything like that, I looked more into the gameplay of it, and I, I liked it. But for the most part, it looked nice, it looked fun, and I actually often would uh, watch it while drawing, and it was clearly fun for me. Awesome. Yeah, it sounds like a fun place um, for sure. Um, so and as how and how um and how you could probably get along or with interact you actually could set up a, as i mentioned with the forums they have this thing in the forums called clubs so you mm-hmm. can create your own club about any st- subject so you could even talk about classic comics there you could even set it up there and see if anyone's interested because i remember setting up one for indie comics and i definitely got some people's attention it probably isn't as active because i don't know what to mention there but i do know that it's but i do know that you can do that interesting yeah so so there's definitely a lot of options for you for sure yeah i'm sure i could get in there and do something um but you know it's just it's interesting uh to see a a kind of a different um approach to social media um and so we have uh fitz factor here says you often see people that don't shift styles only improve at their particular type of drawing but always will hit a wall where progress stops. You can only perfect your current knowledge so much. That is true. Like people, yeah, exactly. Like sometimes when you're when um when your style doesn't shift, or um sorry, what was I was gonna say because uh, I kind of reached a little bit of a blank. But basically, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. Even if you do it like if you don't shift your style or if you do shift your style, sometimes you will hit a blank. Like, and this could also be involving with um, maybe writing. I don't know if that's what Fitz is also trying to say, but, or even the urge to create in a sense. And that happens personally. Yeah, for sure. Uh, DS is here. What's up? Thanks for coming by. Good afternoon. Good night. Hello there. Good morning, wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Let's see. Um, and uh, Michael apparently is sticking around <laughs> and says, I always try to mimic other artists, and luckily it never works out. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it, I think it's funny though, because, like, I think that's true. Like, you're kind of going to draw how you draw, um, no matter what. Uh, some people are really good at copying another style and, and there is something to that, but 
generally most artists I find when they try to do their version of another style, it's still not quite exactly that style and it, it's more them as well and and there's different gradations of how much their style is in there and how much uh you know the other person's um style is in there but uh you know it, i think that's actually a good like you said it, it luckily it never works like i think that's actually a good thing because that you it's hard to like fully mimic a style because you know that's how you make it your own and that's how you can incorporate multiple styles into your own and it's still it's like color harmony like you can put all kinds of colors on the page but it won't look right but you know it's if you if you're able to like some people that people use different methods you know they they find certain combinations that work um another method is to keep a lot of the colors a little bit closer to uh a little bit of a gray or toned down area and then um you know you you pop out certain colors uh you know there, there's different there's a lot of different methods with with how to kind of harmonize color but it can look like a mess or it can look pretty amazing um and i feel like the fact that all these styles are filtered through whoever you are as an artist that i think is, is maybe what what can cause it to work and the more you practice it the more you play around with different a lot of different styles the more you start to almost develop your own um visual language that is informed by all these other things but but in in part but not whole wholly informed you know yeah that makes sense because uh as much as you want to copy a style what you can get away from that is or take away from that are two things you mess up and maybe you discover something that discover something by accident which can have to ha can happen often if like happen often especially if it's done by accident or you could study how it's drawn or try to come up with your own conclusion based on fundamentals essentially hmm. and yeah. maybe do a twist on that like stretch and twist it and see how that develops because you'd be surprised um because when i found out that a lot of modern uh a lot of modern anime especially or yeah like a modern anime and cartoons take influence from classics and when i compare them i'm like are are you messing with me because i don't see it at all hmm. and that's that's the first thing that comes to my mind but then when you pay attention it often works and it's crazy yeah yeah for sure um jimmy draws art hi hi hello yo um some person just got here watched a few of your mini comic videos i haven't yet made one but hey guys very good thumbnail for the video by the way you get it yeah. well I, I hope i get it and thank you <laughs> um and i'm glad you're watching the mini comic videos and uh i definitely would recommend trying it out even if it's the worst comic you ever make just finishing one i think will teach you a lot and then you can move on to the next one and make it even better um definitely worth it in my opinion obviously i made the videos and stuff <laughs> um so let's see what else we got here uh, um lame vision says i specify on my commission sheet that all art is only in my style and so far it has been great because all i have to do is draw how i normally draw they just choose the content uh okay so they give you so they basically he sticks with the style but the subject can be about anything essentially okay so thank you line vision for clarifying that well yeah i mean again that's one approach you know and and that doesn't necessarily have to be the approach but that's obviously the approach uh he uses and you know i don't blame him because he's freaking awesome at art so <laughs> you know i'd probably yeah. do that too um that here we go and he adds sometimes you have to stand your ground and try not to try not to self your oh, sell like, yourself yeah. short <laughs> yeah so, yeah um mm -hmm. yeah he's right he's right because if you sell yourself short then some people could take advantage of that you know they'll see that um 
you you'll do what they say and they'll take advantage of it sometimes that happens without a doubt yeah yeah that's a good point acid lace new grounds is a relic from when the internet was good <laughs> i mean if it helps it still is good so yeah. i would still recommend doing uh like going there for it's personally fun it's very underrated in my opinion and i like how because because remember to go back on the comment of the, the whole app thing i don't know if they would ever do an app in my honest opinion because it's very it's essentially the equivalent of the internet equivalent of underground comics you knew they mm. existed but you kind of had to know someone who was in it it was kind of like a right. you know a guy you know a guy who knows a guy kind of scenario in which case it's easier to find now especially since some people are definitely going back to it i can see that especially nowadays like this i think this happened sometime around maybe 2018 maybe earlier i could be wrong but i mean that's when i started so that's i mean i'm living proof but at the same time i can't be specific yeah so and um actually yeah no that's the thing though there are some people who um even do stuff like i know there's um mick lauer uh he's one of my favorite artists personally he does um animations and cartoons and stuff and yeah. he and right now he's actually working on a parody not a parody series a like a fan series for jojo's bizarre adventure in a motion comic style oh, okay so yeah no it's very underground in a sense unless you look deep and try to try to like find like artists and stuff and games i don't know how i found new grounds when i when i was young i, I think that was when like it was all over the place and someone mentioned it i think i think that's how i found it but Honestly, I have no idea how most people would find it today. I would say just put it in your profile personally. Yeah, cool. Um, Dale had a question earlier. Who did he say? But I don't know what you're talking about now because it's been so long. Um, oh, I but... said um, oh, I said Rice Pirate or McLauer. Oh, okay. Well, this uh, he might have been talking about way before because that's an early comment. Oh, okay. Never mind then. So if you want to clarify, let us know, and we'll try to answer that. Um, let's see. Jimmy draws art. I remember Newgrounds from when I was in school, and that was at least 15 years ago. You know, it's it's funny because I never even heard of it, but, like, it does kind of remind me almost of, like, deviant art or even even MySpace um, back in the day. Like, it's it does have that, that old internet you know type of thing going for it um which hey you know it, it's it's surprising that it's still kind of alive and well and and that's cool and like you said it's got that maybe underground aspect and and that's you know it, it's a it's an interesting place to be you know <laughs> of course because um yeah because it's like a fun place where you just hang out and i don't think they're very you can basically do whatever i mean fun okay i will say this and it's one of the many interesting um, aspects of it is that it has a rating system. So if for some reason, if let's say I was a kid now and I found it, I could choose what kind of content I want to specifically see. So when I found it, I was 13. So maybe when, um, so when I was 13, I would be okay with everyone in teens, but then there was mature and adults, which are very graphic in more ways, obviously. So yeah i think that's another thing like you can basically make whatever provided it's not like you know obviously messed up obviously you're not targeting people obviously but at the same time yeah like you can pretty much draw anything i'm sure yeah i'm sure whatever like whatever art like anyone draws even if it's like comics and i mean i've seen some amateurs appear on newgrounds and they're amateurs but you know i give them i give them guts i'll tell i'll say this though they have a lot of guts for attempting to be artists and that's really something you have to appreciate in a sense. Hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm always down for people putting their stuff out there and uh, getting into that because I, I think it's uh, helpful in a lot of ways. Um, you know, Diaz says uh, new grounds is a cool website. I also remember being afraid of it as a kid since my cousins would uh, watch graphic animations containing popular cartoon characters at the time on there. Uh, yeah, see, that's that that perfectly is a good segue because 
occasionally you can draw anything. So you could literally be anything provided once again, it isn't too messed up or you're not target using it to target someone or anything like that essentially. Hmm. But yeah, they can be graphic. So it's so anyone who wants to visit new grounds, uh, do it with uh, do it with some say, uh, especially if you're younger. Uh, do it with very, very huge caution, and try not to misclick on the wrong thing. That's all I have to say. Yeah, you have been warned. <laughs> uh, Lame Vision says, "I always recommend Newgrounds because so many people think it's dead. The community and content you can post always feels less restricted." I See, like now- that. Yeah, it is less restricted. Exactly. That exactly as I said before, yeah, it's less restricted and you can draw and enjoy what you like to do essentially. If you want to draw comic book art, you can draw comic book art. And actually, I do remember have you ever heard of Tyrant Comics? Uh nope. Tyrant Comics. I think they're an indie they're creating like an indie comic. I forget what they made, but it involves like a knight character. Mm-hmm. Uh God, what was it called? Uh, Tyrant Comics. Let's see, I can't find it now. The one time, oh, okay, it was called Tyrant Comics, and it was called uh, the Savage Sword, like uh, the Savage Swordsman, or something like that. Huh. Have you ever heard of an indie comic? No, I mean I've heard of you know Savage Sword of Conan, but no. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was called the Savage Swordsman, but yeah, no, they they um they did it as a method of um promoting their comic, and a lot of people seemed to view it. It didn't get so popular, but people did. It definitely got the word out as it got seventy votes and four hundred and forty four people saw it. Well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. Like it's know, a good I place feel, to. I feel like even one viewer is a is a success is a win you know <laughs> that is one true reader, you know um so anywhere you can get them i think is good ralph Contreras says sometimes it feels like my style has chosen me instead of me cho- choosing it it's like a that's mutual thing it's that's interesting yeah it's like a mutual kind of thing when you think about it yeah so yeah i agree with you ralph <laughs> Yep, it's interesting. Um, I mean, the, to a certain degree, you know, it's a, one thing that's funny is sometimes you appreciate so many different people's art and you like that, like it, but it's hard to know what you want to do as an artist. And and there's also the the time where you have a vision or an idea of how you want something to look, and then you draw it and it doesn't come out like you envisioned it. Sometimes it comes out better. Sometimes it comes out just unsatisfying. Um, And also like some people like, it's like you, sometimes you have to settle for the style that you just, you just draw. Like you, you can't almost control it to a certain degree. Um, I think I think actually we can have a lot of control, but maybe maybe everybody doesn't have that ability. Um, but that being said, like, yeah, I don't know. It, I think there definitely is an aspect to it of of sometimes the style chooses you, and you know you have to decide whether that style is a style you want to really draw in, or if there's something you can do to modify it to make it more satisfying to you. I think it's important that you, whatever style you do draw in, that it's a style that you enjoy um, because this is going to take a lot of time. You know, this is going to take a lot of hours and, and you know, depending on what you want to do, but, you know, if you want to do comics or just art in general, even doing one piece can take a lot of time. Um, so you'd want to enjoy it. And it's also going to take a lot of work and pain and a lot of willpower to push through if you want to say make a career out of it um so you you know i think it's just a great advantage if you enjoy your style and that's why i've almost been uh leaning more towards a cartoony style because for me that's become more fun sometimes for me um even though i do like noodle noodling around sometimes and doing detailed stuff so you know I mean, I'll say this, like, if you want a good reference on, like, because, like, I think another good way is to study things that other, study comics that 
have a cartoony style to give you that motivation. Because I remember reading um, or looking up uh, Ralph Snart because I heard that once and I thought, okay, that sounds pretty cool as a comic. It sounds silly, but and I and it sounds like a silly cartoon. I looked it up and oh, it's a it's a comic book, not a not a cartoon, and it it's cartoony in a slapsticky in a slapsticky kind of way yet it has everything that you're looking for in a cartoony comic book style and another one to caution kids from reading <laughs> yeah oh yeah no no that one uh that one yeah no kids uh, do not uh, you do not read that do not read that i remember it was actually because i remember you told me that story that happened like you saw it when you were a kid or something yeah yeah it's funny um, oh yeah I, no, I, was... I i uh when I, I was younger right around the i'd even have been the same time when i bought x-force number one and i got super excited about comics i think i bought a ralph snark comic and i thought um you know that i was uh you know i just I, like you said it had a cartoony style and it, it just, the art was something that was interesting to me. So that's why I bought it. Um, and I kind of could see that there was maybe some stuff that wasn't so good that, or that, you know, wasn't appropriate for, for my age. Definitely. Um, but I didn't really know like some of the words that things and stuff that were said in it, I didn't even really understand yet. Um, but my mom got a hold of the comic and, and she was like, do you even know what this means? And I'm like, not really. And she like explained it to me and she said, I'm, you can't, you're not, I'm not going to let you have this comic because it's not, you know, it's not appropriate. So, um, you know, I, mean, yeah, I felt I really bad, too. but you know, at the same time I was like, Oh, okay, that's fine. I don't really know. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. Cause I remember, uh, I did, I remember seeing family guy once and it looked cartoony, but yeah, no, I was told not to watch it um, <laughs> for obvious reasons. So I consider, I consider that like the comic book version of like family guy, but it's more entertaining, I'll say that, but it's definitely not for it's definitely not for kids. So well, it's I think it's more crude than Family Guy, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely, especially if you're comparing the classics. Yeah, so, so at least the one that I had, not from memory. Now that I know what it was and stuff, I'm like, yeah, that was a little much for a little, for a kid. Um, but um, you know, whatever. That being said, that's that's what happened. Um, it's kind of a funny story. Um, so yeah. Um, what um what is your kind of goals you know with art do you um are you wanting to make this into a career do you want to do animation are you comics or all kinds of things or what what is kind of your goals with with what you want to do oh well i do have a well i do want to do cartooning as a career i do want to do cartooning whether it be for comics or animation as a career and there's always a backup plan obviously there's always a backup plan for whatever you have and for example i'm looking into teaching so art being an art teacher so if that doesn't work and i could still per and i could still live up uh, what i'm doing i'm still doing art stuff i'm just going to mm -hmm. be doing it in a different way and I'm plus and it's part of my profession still but if i really wanted to be a cartoonist there are many things that I would have to that were I would have to embrace that I would have to and habits that I would have to stop without a doubt. Hmm. Such as I would have to get serious in a sense. Like when I say get serious, I mean like start um, taking what I like to do seriously because, and this is something I realized like for for about a year and a half that um. There are going to be some artists that you are going to meet that do not take do not take this seriously, and uh, and if anyone who has spoken to me privately uh, it knows, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. But yeah, no, there's always going to be like like I know I said amateurs. Obviously, I'll commend them for trying, but there are those who have done this for years, but like are doing it in a way as if like, oh, it's it's still a drawing, but like, here's the thing though, it's how they, it's like they're not doing it as much or they have potential and you see that potential, but it's like they're picking not to do it, you know? Hmm. And that's something, 
I don't want to do. I mean, I've been told that I have some potential, which that alone is one that not alone, but like one of is one of the many reasons of what caught my attention. I have potential. And then I thought to myself, why should I spend my day just being lazy and not being that productive if I haven't if especially in this scenario, what's 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 going on in the world uh right now, but like yeah, no, why waste it just doing nothing? I say be more productive. And this is actually an example that a friend of mine once told me. If I was, and the example was, if I were studying to be a doctor, do I just learn the fundamentals of how to be a doctor and then go to uh, med school and simply not learn it only to essentially not give it up my all and not become a doc- doctor? Hmm. I like that. Even though the profession is... <laughs> Even though the profession is incredibly different, which is true, both of them are definitely different, but I shouldn't treat it like, oh, it's just doodling, scribbling lines. It's not that hard, which it it definitely is hard, especially when you want, if you want me to be a very accurate or believable, mind you, believable with the drawings, then yes, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to be believable with the drawings without a doubt. I would have to mm. study, study, study. And that is what I'm trying to do before... Um, like not before, but like uh, every single day. So I don't forget any of this. And that just like a doctor, a surgeon, a brain operator or anything like that, it stays in my mind where I don't need to like, or rather not, not need, but like a simple thought. And I just have everything in my head, essentially, Hmm. where it's second nature, that sort of thing. Interesting. So yeah. So at the same time, I would say, I would have to say, um, yeah, just keep trying, but keep drawing and do it in a way as if you, you believe in yourself and you want to do more because, because I, because when I look back, because, um, because, because recently I celebrated my, um, 50 fans that I got on Newgrounds, which on a website like Newgrounds, it actually is kind of a, it's, it's a slight success. It's a work in progress, but when I look back, I did not upload that much. And it was because that was also during the time when I wasn't really reading the fundamentals of any of that stuff. And I was during like in a pause or something like that. And because of that, I didn't really, not necessarily get attention, but I didn't really get um, improved. At least I didn't feel like I was improving. And that is something that artists need to have when thinking. They need to have this mentality or need or want whichever you want it's up to you personally you want to have this ability to uh capability essentially to want to thrive want to rise on top and obviously you're not okay in my mind i don't think i can be the best cartoonist or comic book artist of all time there are there are too many too many comic book artists who are considered the best and i can never reach up to my up to my like uh lengths to them but mm-hmm. in my mind, I could be good. I can just understand it and learn. And then how I, how I evolve and, and just like how you raise a child or take care of a puppy, depending on how you nurture those creatures, that's how my art will grow. Interesting. Well, I like, I think that I, I like that. It, it reminds me of, kind of the concept of um investing in yourself um or investing in your um kind of your skills and 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 things like that um in your career Uh, and and i like the the phrase nurturing though like that's that's a cool way to think of it as well um so that's that's cool i like that yeah because um if i don't because if i don't respect my art my art is not going to be respecting me without a doubt. Hmm. Another good one. <laughs> uh, I've got a I couple mean, more yeah. comments to, to get to. Um, but, oh, okay. but as we, uh, before we get to those comments, uh, let people know where they can um, find you. Obviously epithet soup on new grounds. Where else can they find you? Well, you can also find me on Twitter. I'm also on Twitter. Uh, I'm also on Instagram. So, it's all under the same name. And if you are having trouble finding it, you can just go to my Newgrounds page and my Twitter and Instagram should already be linked. So, you know, you can just do that. Cool. Awesome. Um, so Arthur Manien, 
Yanya, Manana. I don't know. That's a pretty cool name, though. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. Says, I feel that my art style doesn't match my history and where I come from. Interesting. Um, I'm African, and one of the things I discuss with my friends, the lack of representation in most art books. Um, and then he continues, I, be I barely... I see books that teach people how to draw Africans and African Americans. I find it odd when I see African American people drawn in an anime style. What are your thoughts on this? <laughs> um, well, um, well, I mean, I have a few things to say. Um, well, let's see. I can, I, can, I can actually understand that on the grounds that I'm also African American. But the thing is, Honestly, when it comes to drawing and entertaining and doing all that, and, and especially if you want to draw art, now, depending on what kind of art you're trying to go for, representation can matter. But if you're trying to tell a story visually or do it in a way where, like, if you're trying to tell a, a visual story in the best way possible or tell a, a funny story or anything like that, it all depends on your preference. Um, that, honestly... That honestly, I think that all depends on the believability aspect rather than the realistically or the historical aspect of it. Now, there's nothing wrong with drawing based on based on history, especially if you're prideful of history. I can I can respect that without a doubt. But at the same time, if you want to draw like if you want to draw like an African-American character or any character at all, I would say what you should do is especially depending on the style you're trying to go for, study actual African-American people or any kind of people you want and notice a similar pattern with their facial structure and see what you can do to create your own characters or how to draw them in your own way, essentially. Just study them and just look very deep at their... It's no different to that of um, figure drawing. It's no different to that of figure drawing at all. So just look at them and study them as long as you can and try to think... What attributes make up African Americans? What face makes up this other race, like Caucasian or Hispanic, Asian, any of that? And to, I don't know if that's a question about like African American people drawn in anime style. I don't know if you're talking about the boondocks because, I mean, if you are, that's, that's actually kind of fair. But at the same time, but at the same time, like, um, I understand where you're coming from. So, my thoughts are, I would say, study more face. If uh, I don't know if that's a thing, but like face, uh, face drawing, not face drawings, um, f facial figures or facial figures, features. I'm mm. saying it right now. Study more facial features on what they have in common, in a sense, but take what they have in common and just play around with it in your own way, in your style. For example, um, just uh, for example, if um. How do I put this? Uh, da, da, da. Like a specific detail that makes them stand out in a sense. And it could be anything. And you just play around with that, what stands out in a different way. Or you could try, or you could try um caricaturing. I don't know if that's what you want to do, but like try looking up some caricature artists. I don't really know too many of them. I don't really know any by name, but I have seen some characters, caricatures been done. Or you could try studying characters that are African American and see what or like take all of them and see what they have in common and try to come up with your own little system. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. Yeah. I find it uh, tricky myself. Um, you know, I actually draw a lot of um, African American, like a lot of my characters actually uh, like glyph is like my main character. He's, you know, pro probably descendant at least from African American. Cause the whole story kind of, there's America doesn't really exist in my story, but, um, <laughs> but the, uh, but I've had a lot of other characters. Uh, I, I not a hundred percent decided, but I, this Otis comic that I plan on doing, I think he's going to be an African American character. Um, and you know, I don't know it, to me, it's always tricky though, because, you know, Yes, you want to look at the features, but when it comes down to it, you know, all of any race doesn't necessarily look like what many of 
I, you know what I mean? Like there, there's certain features. Yeah, there's not exactly like, a lot of people. Especially being that look like, like being like a white artist, you know, I don't want to accentuate a feature that ends up being a stereotype, you know? And yeah, that's another thing I probably <laughs> should have probably clarified. So yeah, I think that's another thing I wanted to say too. Like what I probably should have said as well, that that's kind of hard to do. Cause again, it depends on what you're trying to go for Arthur. If you're still watching this, if you're trying to go for like painting, that's again, studying facial features, I guess could work. But if you're trying to do it like, in a sense where you're trying to be historical, what you should do is simply, uh, what you should do is essentially not look too much into it as if not to look, not to look interest, not, not, sorry, not to look so into it in the sense where in, in the sense where it like is the number one priority, because that's going to cause a lot of stall with how, how your story or, creation is going to be made it's going to make you stall in the sense and you won't get that much done so it can be tricky but honestly i don't think there's an app i don't think there's a complete concrete way of doing it so in a way you'd have to find that on your own and because i know that the boondocks even though it has an anime style which it does which i don't know where that style comes from i don't know whether it comes from anime but i do know it is it um it originated from a comic strip so you can take that however you want yeah and you can also look at i would say examples too like um you know there's a whole you know a whole run of comics that came out from dc years ago called milestone and and um that you know featured probably predominantly african-american um characters and so and that was you know for the most part i think it was african-american uh creators um who did it and so that might be a good w place to look there's also um saturday a.m comics i think it's called like because you're talking about anime um and i can't remember the guy's name but he's on youtube he does a lot of videos it's been a while since i've watched a video oh uh, you know is it white manga uh, yes white manga that's right so, um, you know, he, that whole, that's like Shonen Jump for like an American version of Shonen Jump, that whole like anthology. And I think there's a lot of, um, African-American creators in that as well. Um, and that have characters as well who are not always that, but like, I don't know, there's examples out there, um, of some people who have done it and, and it's like you, you got to kind of take what you like, I guess. And, you know, it's a tricky thing. Race, you know, is a tricky thing. I think when I when I write a character, I try to focus on the humanity um, as a whole, you know, because I think as much as there are very much cultural differences at times, um, there's the, what's common is our humanity. You know, we all fear things. We all um you know hope for things we all love people we all you know we, we all have a lot of commonalities you know that um, is true because so um I try to focus on that yeah actually yeah you know what arthur to answer your question actually no i think another thing i probably should add is um essentially what marshall is saying here because at the same time i think what you should need to focus on make your make your character first in the like make your character first like describe a character who has dreams goals and what they're like and give us a reason to care about this character and as you go deeper in this character into your character's history and we learn more about them we'll essentially relate to them and understand more than than before especially since we like them hmm yeah. so that totally. is something I would definitely do. Like humanize them first mm -hmm. is um, yeah. If you do that first, then, then I think people will be more interested as you tell more history. So about the character. Hmm. Um, Glad man comics says a lot of the reason for African Americans being portrayed in anime styles is because most of us enjoy watching anime and try to emulate that style when they draw themselves mm, yeah of that um okay, cool that's, that's fair that is actually fair 
yeah, I'm, yeah, I suppose I don't really, you know, that's, I don't know, that's, that's cool that that's the case. I think it is kind of interesting because, you know, with anime, it doesn't seem like the typical anime features match the features you would, you know, maybe see from, from, um, you know, uh, African-American facial features and, um, and stuff like that. But, you know, at the same time, there are people who I've seen who do match it a little bit. So it's like, it's, it's hard to say, but and that's you know, mentioned, like, I can see where the difficulty is for sure. I, and I have the similar difficulties as well. <laughs> I also think that, honestly, I think that goes for anything that's in a cartoon style, really. I mean, I could do this within, uh, with, uh, yeah, very, sure. oh, yeah, yeah, with like, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, maybe, uh, uh, a commercial art style, but that's not accurate technically. Mm -hmm. Same mm -hmm. thing with that of um, that's not technically accurate, and as well as um, style like uh, the commercial style, as well as maybe rubber hose. That, mm -hmm. that also is not accurate, especially for humans. Not just for I'd be more worried about the body if my arm was rubbering around. I'd be more worried yeah. about my arm if that actually <laughs> would happen. Yeah, but at mm -hmm. the same. But in all seriousness, I can understand. Uh, I can completely understand uh, where where um my, where Arthur is coming, where Arthur is coming from. So, I would say don't really focus too much on it, and just simply just draw what you like and try to develop it in your own way. Especially when writing the character, just make a good character that people will that you know will definitely care about and be invested in. And as you go into their history, just include African history. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll let you have the last word on that. So <laughs> cool. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody for hanging out uh, with us. Glad Man Comics says, love the stream, by the way. Thank you very much. I'm glad uh, I was part of it. Yeah, I'm glad you were too, because uh, you had a lot of interesting things to say. And we always have interesting talks when we hang out in the um, in Discord and stuff. So this is um, true yeah <laughs> so uh once again thank you everybody for hanging out with us thank you everybody who watches on the replay um feel free to put comments in the uh in the comment section and let me know let us know what your you know your thoughts some of your thoughts on style and some of the things we said i'd be curious to hear it's it's kind of a evergreen topic it's something that i think is always fun to talk about as style so um, hopefully you guys are finding your way creatively. And, um, other than that, I think we're signing out here. <laughs> yeah. So we will see you next time and you're welcome to come on anytime. Epithet. We've, we've had good talks before, so thanks for coming on, man. I am glad that I came on and I'm glad that I shared what I did. I Absolutely. hope everyone, I hope everyone here enjoyed it actually. Yeah, seems like they did. Um, so thank you, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. All right. Mm -mm -mm.